Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to TV. This is your boy, Kenny, and this is Star Season 3, Episode 8, and the name of this episode is Roots and Wings. This was a damn good episode, and I am really loving Star. Um, so uh, let me begin with this review. Um, we see that Angel um, is pretty much crossing the border, and he's with these... Um, He's with these people. He's with these. Um, he's in this. Um, in this. Uh, you know, car with all of these um, immigrants who are trying to get into the U.S. And we definitely see that the people who are heading this are shady because, um, you know, uh, we we definitely see later on that the two the people that are behind this shit, they 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 using these people. You know that they that, you know, because at the end of the day, these people want money, and if they can't make no money, then they'll kill them. So we see that that they're gonna um, that that angels in danger. Then we get a scene with Jackson and Star. You know, um, they're talking about um, you know you know doing the nursery for the baby and all of that. And Jackson's like, "Well, I'm gonna do this when you're gonna be working a lot." And she's like, "Well, we'll work it out, or whatever." And then we get a visit from Jackson's mother. Now Jackson's mom is a hot ass mess she is like one of those young moms who be trying to who um, be trying to look young and be trying to look trying to be young like their sons you know and we see that she like literally kisses him for like a long time and like stars like what the fuck is going on here and then she's like really like all hugged up on her son and I'm like this damn mother is his damn mother's a trip and we already see that uh, Star ain't really feeling this. Like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> so then we see that Alex and Miss Bruce are having a conversation about Maurice and about all this shit going on at Gal um at um grav at a going on at Gravity Records. And then um, we see that um, finally Carlotta's back. Carlotta went to Jamaica and got her groove back, and she looks good. Um, and she's talking about, you know, they let her know about, you know, Maurice's messy ass. And they also talk about Cassie. Um, um, and then um, Cotton tells her mother about Cassie. Oh, yeah, Cass Cassie's ass is locked up. She in jail. And and then, like, you know, they all saying, like, girl, why would you do that? Your mother just got out of the, out of the um, your mother just came back from her retreat. Why are you trying to, you know, get her upset? But then Cotton was like, well, hey, she needed to know Cassie's ass in jail. It is what it is. I'm like, cause Cotton right now gives no fucks about Cassie at this point. So, so now Cotton now knows about Cassie being that knows that Cassie's locked up. So then we see that the detective meets up with Derek and lets him know that the um that the detective that he was that the um cop that he was working with was murdered, um and she was strangled to death. And he pretty much says that. Well, what about my grandma? What about justice or whatever? He said, look, let the law handle this because you're not you're not safe and don't try to get in the middle of this because you will get hurt so let the law handle this and just just um just stay put but we definitely see that that Derek not only is shaking up that the cop got killed but also the fact that are they ever going to nail the person that that raped his grandmother and little do you know Derek he was actually talking to the nigga that actually raped your grandmother but I can't wait for that to find out because I want Mike Mike to get exactly what he deserves. So then we see that Noah and Maurice, um, Noah's had is at this photo shoot, but he is really having panic attacks. He's kind of, you know, shaken up and and personally, I really do believe that Maurice had that shit set up. With him being extorted and with him getting robbed, I think Maurice was behind that shit. Because Maurice is still pissed that Noah is dating Megan and Maurice wants Megan back. And Maurice will probably do any and everything to get what he wants. And we've seen that about Maurice. So I won't put it past him that Noah got set up by Maurice. So he's now having issues and he's not able to focus. 
Bobby, his father, comes and tries to find out what's going on and everything. And then Maurice kind of, you know, gets at Bobby, was like, yo. Um, and he's like, I'm here to see my son. And he's like, well, your son's busy right now. And if you get in my way, we're going to have a problem and all this shit. I'm like, first of all, and I'm, I kind of felt some way about Noah. I'm like, Noah, I understand that you have, you know, some issues with your dad. But you don't let no nigga disrespect your parents. I don't give a shit. You hold your parents down regardless. Like, yeah, I may have issues with your ass, but I'm not going to let nobody else disrespect you. But Noah was kind of out of it, too. So, But he's trying to tell his dad, dad, just go away. I'm all right. I'm, and, but then he finally confessed that he was robbed. And But he's saying, I'm good, I'm good. He's like, no, you're not good. You know, his father is really trying to connect with him. But Noah's not trying to let that guard down. Um, so then we see that, um, that Simone gets a call and it's Angel and Angel pretty much says that, look, they want, like, I'm in the States and they want $7,000 or they're going to kill me. So we see that Simone links up with Nina, you know, Mateo's wife, and they go to pay the ransom so they can get, um, so they can get Angel back. So... They meet up with the guys. She gives she gives him the money, but then he noticed that she was driving. Um, I think uh, I think it was a BMW. Um, and he he, well, he saw her car and saw that it was you know I think it was a um, I think it was a BMW or a Mercedes. And he was like, oh no, the price just went up. And she gave him another stack. She's like, oh, I came prepared, because Nina Nina knows how this game is played. And then all of a sudden we see that Angel comes out. Her and Aunt, Angel and um, Simone run run up to each other, and we see that damn Nina is jealous. She felt some kind of way. And I'm just going to tie this whole situation together. So then we see later on Nina and Simone. Um, Nina actually helps, you know, get them a place and everything. So, and like, you know, we see there's a scene between Nina and um, Simone, and they're, they're talking and everything, and... Um, Nina finally lets Simone know that she has feelings for her too and that she's in love with her and the next thing you know they share a kiss and Angel sees it and the Angel's like now I see why you wanted a divorce and then we see that um, uh, that Angel and Simone have a moment where he pretty much lets her know that look you know I, I'm, 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 I'm not I, I wasn't expecting you to move on so quickly you know and and she was like, now I know why you never wanted to come back. And she was like, that wasn't, it wasn't like that. But there was parts of my life that I wanted to come back here. And I wanted to, and um, I, 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 I wanted to, um, and I, I just wanted to, you know, figure things out. Well, then he lets her know that, look, I love you. And that's all, you, you're all that matters to me. And, um, you know, that song that I was working on, I finished it. And then they kind of did the little duet together. And that song was nice, though. I was feeling it. Because they, they, they both, their voices work very well together. Because Britney's a good singer and so is Evan. So the two of them, two, the two of them are working. But she says, all I want is you. I love you. You're everything to me. But personally, I think she's actually in love with Nina. But she now feels obligated to um, Angel because he put his life in danger to get back to her. So now she feels, I think she feels a sense of obligation, but I don't think, and I think she loves him, but I don't think she's in love with him because obviously we know that Simone definitely got feelings for Nina. So we're going to see how that situation is going to play itself out. So then we see that um, Carlotta goes to meet up with Cassie at, at the jail or whatever, and she's like, and then like Cassie's like, "Welcome back, sis," and and she's pretty much, "What the hell did you do that 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 you ended up in here?" Like, oh, I figured, I know what the fuck's going on, girl. You covering for fucking Xander's ass, and she was saying that I remember back in the day when y'all were kids, and you know he would make you cut school even to the point that you end up dropping out of school and screwed up your life for him and then like Cassie was like look I don't need you you know I don't need to be walking down um walking down um memory shame I was like you better do that mini Ripperton shit I was so here for that and then 
she was saying that, look, you need to realize that I want to help protect you, but but then she's like, look, I don't need you, Carlotta. I got Xander. Xander is going to get me out of here. He got a top legal team that's going to look out for me. I'm good, you know, and and then that was the first visit of them in jail. So pretty much she chose Xander over Carlotta. So so then we see that um, Take 3 is in the studio. Um, and we see finally um, Carlotta's back. And they're talking about the album or whatever. And and um, and like Carlotta lets, her, lets them know that look. Um, they're the album so far. The Some of the stuff sounds good. But... We need that defining song, so y'all need to get back into the studio and y'all need to rework some stuff. And and they and they pretty much says that the album is like a goodbye to their fans, so they're talking about breaking up. And you know, but Carl, but Carlotta was like, well, right now, and she says that first of all, what the fuck y'all mean y'all splitting up? I didn't fucking work my ass off for y'all to just disband this this group like this. But she lets them know that look, this is what the fuck y'all gonna do? Y'all gonna get back in that studio and work that song, and and but Alice is like, but you know, I got some good stuff here. She's like, yeah, but you need to keep working because it's not gonna work, you know. So you need to get back in there and make things happen. And I need that defining song because that defining song is going is what's gonna set the tone for the album. So then we see um, back at the jail, the detective talks to Cassie. And he's trying to get Cassie to talk, but Cassie's like. I'm not saying shit because I, um, until I get my lawyer and my legal team here, I'm not telling you anything. But the detective was like, look, you need to talk because we can help you. I mean, if you actually start talking now, you might get it home in time to catch BET after dark. And then Cassie was like, that don't even come on anymore, bitch. I was like, damn. I'm like, yo, shout out to Brandy. Brandy is playing this fucking role. I am so happy for Brandy Norwood. Like, she is killing this role as Cassie. Because when she said that, I fell out. I was like, this damn girl's a trip. I live for Cassie. So yeah, that that um so that went down. Then we see um Bobby and Miss Bruce. So yeah, Bobby and Miss Bruce have been getting it in and they've been kind of having this little discreet thing going on. So pretty much um Miss Bruce just kind of was honest with Bobby. Was like, you know, are you trying to hide me or something? Like, you know, you know, are you ashamed of me? And he was like, no, it's nothing like that. It's just that I don't know how Noah's going to react because I am trying to, you know, I am trying to work things out with my son. And I don't want, I don't, I don't want him to, I want to make sure things is good with him before I let him know about us. But Miss Bruce says, like, get it together because, you know, I ain't about this closet shit. You know, I'm being discreet because I love you, but we can't stay hidden forever and I'm like yeah but I'm thinking Bob possible Bobby may have issues with Miss Bruce being being um being trans but but um at the end of the day you know Miss Bruce I, I give I take my hat off to because Miss Bruce has the courage to be herself but but then again, I think it's a mixture of both that he is feeling some kind of way of 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 him being, you know, of, of him being with um, of him being with someone who's trans. But then also the fact that he doesn't know how Noah's going to react. And the thing about it, you know, Noah may react because, you know, him and Miss Bruce are very close and he sees Miss Bruce as a confidant, somebody that he talks to and who gives him good advice. Because Miss Bruce be giving some great advice. Miss Bruce, I have to say, is one of the wisest people on the show. So I live for Miss Bruce's character. So then we see that Noah finds Alex in the studio. She is having another panic attack. Um, she's feeling pressure. She's like, um, and she's like, she's, you know, talks about Derek, talks about the album and the songs. Things aren't working right. And she's just having this crazy ass panic attack. And Noah is there to comfort her. And he pretty much lets her know, like, look, I'm sorry for everything that happened between us. I take responsibility for it. And I'm, I'm sorry. 
Um, then we see um, later on after that, he um, is supposed to be doing this interview with um, with Chloe, you know, Drea's character. And she's asking him questions, and he's having anxiety attacks just like um, just like Alex. You know, thinking about when he got robbed and all of that. And it gets to the point where he's just so um, he's just so out of it that he pretty much says that, look, can we do this another time? But he's like, I owe you. I got you. But I just can't do this right now. So we're seeing that, yeah, he's falling apart. So then we get the court, the actual court date. Um, we see that um, that Carlotta's there, you know, with 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 the goons, um, you know, pretty much, you know, family members, you know, because their whole family is like a it's like a criminal institution. Talking about Carlotta and Cassie's family, and then we see Xander's there with you know he's coming there with his team, um, and pretty much she's been charged with four counts. And the fucked up thing about it, Cassie's innocent. This is all Xander shit, but she's taking the fall for Xander because she's madly in love with him. Um, and pretty much, uh, she lets him know that look. So Carlotta lets it lets it be known that look, we got your back, but you got you need to make a choice. It's either gonna be us or it's gonna be Xander. She chooses Xander. And then Xander and Cass, so, so Xander and Carlotta go back and forth, and she was like, you really got this girl so wrapped around your shit that she's about to ruin her life for you, you know, and then, and then pretty much, you know, Xander was like, well, it's no difference, it's no, it's no, it's no difference to what you're trying to do, because at the end of the day, you nothing but a selfish bitch, and she was about to stick him, but they, the, the guys was like, nah, calm the fuck down. And then she pretty much like, I'm going to send you to hell. And then he was like, yeah, and I'll be waiting for you there. I'm like, that damn Xander needs to go. Because Xander is an evil bastard. And he's completely selfish. So, so we see that um, Jackson and Star um, have a moment at the house. Um... So pretty much, we, she's there with the mother or whatever, and Star comes into this room and she sees all of this stuff. And then the mother was like, "I'm gonna do the nursery," and she was like, um, "No, you're not doing the nursery. Um, that's something that me and Jackson are gonna do." But he's like, "Well, the thing is, how are you gonna do that when you're gonna be on tour and all that?" She's like, first of all, um, don't worry about that. And besides, this is my house, and I say what goes." Oh, the damn mother starts turning up, calling her white trash, and I know about bitches like you. My son told me everything about you. You know, I know about what happened with your mom and all of that, and, and blah, blah, blah. And fucking Star was like, you better get her before I do. You better get your fucking mother, Jackson. And I'm like, Jackson, yes, because Star will fuck your mother up. Pregnant and all, Star will beat your mom's ass because your mother is jumping up there talking all this shit, calling her white trash and calling her a whore and all of this shit. And later on, Jackson tells, um, you know, her and um, Jackson and, um, sorry, Jackson and Star have a conversation later on and Jackson reveals that his mother is bipolar and that it was an up and down throughout his life. You never know what you was going to get from her. And he said, and she, so she, she was like, why wouldn't you tell me this? And he was saying that, look, you know, just like you, there's some things you just can't talk about. But she lets him know, like, look, I'm here for you. You know, we're going to be, we're going to be good parents. We're going to raise this kid. You know, we're going, we're going to make it. But now we know why the damn mother was tripping because he, he sent his mother home after that. But yeah, because she was like wondering what the fuck is going on with her ass. Like, what the hell? And it explains why she's the way she is. She got a mental problem, and it's now obvious. So then we actually see that um, Noah and Bobby have a moment. Um, you know, because after that whole interview thing didn't go well with Chloe, Bobby runs into him. Um, and Bobby's kind of like trying to be there for him. Like, look, you got a lot of weight on your shoulders. Like, you need, you know... Um, 
and and then like and he, he was like look i and and like noah is just still trying to put up this facade that everything's fine and then bobby's like you're not fine son i see it you're not okay and then they have this whole thing and i think this is a good piece that they did i have to say both um luke james and harold um and harold um Perineu, yeah, I got his name playing right. They did a fucking excellent job in this scene because this is a, um, this is an issue that black men need to have. I mean, this is an issue that black men need to talk about. This whole question of masculinity, you know, because a lot of black men, you know, are overly masculine because it, it's like we feel that we have to be a certain type of way to be considered a man, and. And he was saying that, look, I'm a man. I'm gonna handle this, and you know, I gotta, um, I, I, I gotta, you know. And then we see that this whole concept, they, they kind of do like this little um, segment where they show like little Noah bonding with his father, and his father telling them all this stuff that you gotta be tough, you gotta be macho, you gotta be this, you gotta be that, you know, as far as being a black man. And we see that he wants to connect with his father, but he has that wall up, and we see that Bobby. Looked like he was about to break down because he's like, oh my God, I've created a monster. You know, I told him that a black man is never supposed to cry. A black man is never supposed to show emotion. Black men are not supposed to be vulnerable. Black men are supposed to be this certain way. And it's been a dog, it's been this dogmatic I, um, idea that has infiltrated the black community for a long, for a long amount of time. And I'm glad that Lee actually talked about this in this show about this hyper masculinity issue that we have with black men So then we also um, get a scene with um, Carlotta and Miss Bruce. Miss um, Bruce tells Carlotta that, look, after everything you've been through, you need to be more worried about yourself. You worried about Cassie and you worried about Take Three. You don't, you don't need to be putting all your energy in that. Cassie dug her great. Cassie dug her, uh, made her bed. You need to let Cassie lie in it. And then she says that, you know, as far as Take Three, you know, you took them in when they were girls and you raised them up and now they're young women you need to let them use their wings let them fly let them do what they want to do you know because you know at the end of the day you were so involved in this that you damn near lost yourself and you can't lose yourself again and then like Carlotta's like when did your ass become so wise as I said, like Miss Bruce is the wisest person on this show. There's nothing but wisdom from Miss Bruce. And then we definitely see that this whole episode, Noah is carrying in a gun on him because of that paranoia. After going through something like that, now he's paranoid and he always has a gun on him. So So yeah, so we saw earlier when um when Noah was talking to Alex he said that, you know, I'm going to be at um, Karma later on. Won't you come in and won't you come there and me? You can hang out. So we see that, um, you know, and that was another thing that, um, you know, and that was another. I mean, I think that whole situation between Noah and um, his father was about the fact that Bobby found out that he saw that he was carrying a gun. And he was saying, you don't need to have that. And he was like, yes, I do. I'm a man. I got to protect my shit. And that's when that whole question of hypermasculinity comes in because black men have this problem where a lot of black men are overly masculine and they really they they, they really reject any emotion or sensitivity or anything like that. But we see that Noah and Alex are, um, are at the club. Noah still got the damn gun on his ass. We see that the chemistry between Noah and Alex is still there. You know, they up there dancing, having a good time. And we see that Alice, you know, puts a kiss on Noah. And Derek was in the club and he saw that shit. 
Um, and she was saying that, you know, I like that I can just, you know, with, with you, I can be free and authentic or whatever. But Noah was the one that stopped her. Because, you know, Noah is still, he's with Megan right now. Even though we didn't see her this episode. So he pretty much stopped um, Alex. And then we see later on, you know, Derek runs up on Noah. And Noah pulls out the gun. And he was like, he was like, use it, dude. Use it. And then all of a sudden, that day on Quincy's like, yeah, yeah. You, won't you be about it, about it, boy? I was like, yo. Derek just completely just turned into this hood ass nigga. Like, just like that. I was like, yo. He's like, yeah, be about it, about it, boy. Pop that shit. And he was like, yo. I, I, I didn't. Because, you know, he knows Derek. So he's like, man, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pull a gun on you. But you can't be rolling up on me like that. And he was like, yeah. But I just saw you over there with my girl and all this shit. She said, first of all, um, she kissed me. And at the end of the day, you broke her heart. So really, she ain't your girl. Because uh, she, me and her were kicking it because of something you did. Now, whatever it is you did, y'all need to work that out. But you need to just let her be right now. So, and I was just like, look at Noah and flip the damn script on Derek. Because I'm like, yeah, it was you not telling her shit is what got her in this situation. And then not only that, she walked up, you, she walked up on you kissing the detective. And because she don't know what the fuck's going on, she really thinks you cheating on her. So he's kind of like threw that out there, like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I thought that was uh, that was a really good scene right there. So he kind of like let him know what was up. So we see that finally Carlotta goes back to the jail to talk to Cassie, and she's like, "You back here again? What else is new?" And Carlotta tells the truth about their father, and she says that, look, all this time you thought daddy loved me more, he didn't love me, he was he was sexually abusing me, and I, I didn't say anything because I wanted to protect you, I would rather him do that to me versus him doing that to you, and she said that, look, daddy didn't love me, daddy didn't love nobody, daddy was a dark man and that same darkness I see in dad I see in Xander but that's a monster that you're gonna have to put to bed and then we see that that damn Cassie broke and I was like she finally realizes all this time you were jealous of Carlotta and the whole time she was protecting you and she always had your back and now Cassie realizes the truth that she's just been a stupid bitch this entire time so, so after that, um, so then after that, we see that Xander goes to visit Cassie, and pretty much, Cassie says that, you know what, I worked so hard throughout my life to not be this average hood chick, but then she realizes, but she's like, I now realize, you never deserved my love. And you never deserved me. You've always used me. You've always made me a part of your plans. But you never really wanted to build anything with me. I loved you from the from the I've I loved you from the pit of of who I am, and you never gave a damn. And now I see it. You don't give a damn about me. You know what? Fuck you. This shit's over. I'm done with your ass. I'm riding with Carlotta because Carlotta was the only one that ever had my back in my life. And then this motherfucker was like, well, hmm, don't do this. And besides, you ain't, you are the average, you are the average black bitch from the hood. And let's see if you make it out of here alive. I'm like, oh, cause, cause, cause Cassie let him know. I'm going to see you when I get out of here though. He's like, yeah, but we'll see if you make it out of here alive. And I'm like, that Xander is an evil bastard. And I'm, I'm ready for Cassie to take his ass down because he literally destroyed her dream. He destroyed every anything that she tried to do good. He sabotaged it. She wanted to. She wanted to um to become a legitimate businesswoman with Karma, and now the shit's up in smoke because of because of shit that Xander was doing.
So then we see that um, Carlotta goes to the studio. They're playing that song Live It Up, you know, that actually samples some of um, Nina Simone. I love that track because I've been playing it a lot on YouTube. Um, and she's like, oh, yeah, that's a hit. And she's pretty much saying that, look, I respect what you guys are going to do. You know, I, you know, let's just make this album one of the best albums ever. Let's make this shit work, you know, and then you guys can go off and do what you want to do. But then they said that we know what's missing. And Carlotta's like, what? She said, we, we missing you. Get your ass up in that booth and, and put something down. So we see that Carlotta gets in the studio and she actually um, does, does some vocals, you know. So Carlotta's going to be on the Take 3 album. So I thought that was cool. Then we get the last scene. Um, well, actually, hold on. Um, we also get a scene that after um, after after what um, Noah went through with Derek, um, Noah has a situation with his father, and pretty much he says that I don't want. He he pretty much gave his father the gun. He was like, I don't want this anymore because I don't want to be that person, you know. And then Bobby tells him the truth that you know all the stuff I taught you about being a man and that a man got to be tough you know this whole thing this whole um, talk about masculinity I want to let you know that everything I told you that was all wrong you know that was all wrong you know I apologize because I failed you you know men can cry men can be passionate men can be open you know and this whole hyper masculinity thing is what's destroying us as black men and we have to put some love and tenderness in it and we see that this having this conversation Noah asks his father to become his manager because he says you've always had an ear, ear for his dad so he's like well yeah I do he's like yeah and um and Bobby agrees to become his manager because I'm like yeah Bobby with well, now Bobby being his manager He's going to stick it to Maurice's ass. And Maurice doing all this flexing and all this shit. You and, you, and I think Maurice is doing all this shit because he knows that Bobby's gay. And he thinks that he can punk Bobby. Oh no, boo-boo. You up in the ATL. <laughs> you going to walk out somewhere and you going to have a whole group of sissies that's going to put your ass in the dirt. Keep on playing them damn games. You know, and, I, and I'm so here for Bobby you know taking down Maurice because Maurice ain't shit and as and again I think Maurice was behind that whole robbery situation he wanted to punk him in front of Megan and that was his old goal and then on top of it he he when it comes down to his well-being because after he had that whole situation with Chloe and he wasn't cohesive we see again Bobby trying to get to Noah and Maurice being in the middle of it because Maurice only only sees Noah as a cash cow. He don't give a shit about Noah's well-being. He doesn't give a damn about him. You know, and you got people like that in industry. They only care about making the money. You know, get it, get it fast. And that's all there is to it. But then we get the last scene. And I have to say, this scene was so powerful. We see that Carlotta goes to her dad's house. And her dad is actually played by veteran, veteran actor and talent... Ben Vereen and the father is literally playing dumb like he don't know what she talking about and she says that I remember you used to take me to get ice cream at the park and you used to carry me you know and she talks about but you took advantage of my openness I loved you and you violated me and you violated me time and time again and she lets him know look I've been carrying your sin on my back all this time. And she says that look, you broke you you um you um you broke my trust, but you are not gonna break my strength. And all of this shit that I've been carrying, I'm now gonna put it on your doorstep and see how you live with it from from here from this point on. I'm done. And she walked away and we actually see that there was a burden that was lifted off of Carlotta and Carlotta was able to to lift up her head and walk towards her destiny. And I was like, that was so beautiful that she finally confronted the man who abused her. And we we actually see that she's finally freed herself. So that's what I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. 
But um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow me on all of my social platforms. I have them all listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I'll be back with the next episode of Star. So until next time, everybody, take care.